Hello! It's October the 27th! It's 2011! This is day... This... You, you, can, put up, you can put it on me? Oh, yeah. This is, this is day... This is day 11 of Occupy Worcester. I'm, this is five way to show about Worcester. I'm Mike Benedetti. This is Brendan Milliken. Today with creepy Halloween cam. No, that's the only way we can like that. Blair Witch cam. And no, they just nobody's awake tonight at the camp here on Lake Park in Lake Park. Camp Saki Bottom. Uh, so there's nobody to talk to. We called some people on the phone who weren't at the camp, and they're like, "Oh yeah, people are down there," but I think everybody's asleep. They're probably in their tents saying, "Why don't you guys just shut up and let us go to sleep?" It's a cold day today. It's actually going to get down below freezing, and it's uh, a ra it's, out here. It's a rainy day. It's Closer, snowing, I guess. far well, farther yeah. away from the farther away from the lake, it's turning to snow. Out here, it's just kind of like hitting well, the ground. Snow on oh, the there is some, yeah. Nobody can see this on our incredibly poor resolution, but in fact, there is some snow coming down. And it's just like a good camp here, you know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, like your standard Koa campground up in Maine. That's ah, crap. No, let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's go downtown. Let's go let's see. Uh, let's go. Let's go continue the show elsewhere. Um, you said that there's a uh, some, sort of, some sort of policeman here. There is some sort of policeman here. It looks like the uh, environmental police for the state of Massachusetts has set up their people. Uh, oh, hold on. That's like, super creepy. Here, Mike. This is disco camp. Yeah, Let me fix this. Here. Um, yeah, they've got a detail officer who's down here for the evening. So oh yeah. He's here for, for for no reason other than uh, safety and security. Uh huh. Uh, he's not necessarily in agreement with uh, the occupiers. Right. But uh, supports their constitutional rights and is here to uh, keep them uh, safe and secure while they are down here camping. Well, fantastic. Here's Occupy Clark. They have a sign which says, "We're in the commuter lounge of the University Center for General Assembly." Let's go see if they're there, Brendan. I'm not gonna, I'm not they got sorry. about seven tents and plus one big tent here. So we're here inside of this like Clark Student Center, and who do we find at the Occupy Clark General Assembly? But Occupy Worcester people. Hey, Cook, how you doing? Great. How are you? Good. It's good to have you on the show again. Lovely. I like. I'm glad you're wearing the bandana because it makes all this seem much more uh, hardcore. Very hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys. So, so so some of you guys from the camp are over here in solidarity with the Occupy Clark guys today. Yes, we yeah? are. Uh, so how are things going over at the camp? Over at camp, things yeah. are going well. We uh, we had a brief kind of lapse in morale for a day or so. Okay. But tonight we got back on top of things. Our direct action council is in full force right now. Okay. There's a lot of gumption being passed around the camp. Okay. And uh, we are, you know, right now we are organizing. We're getting smart. Mm -hmm. And we will see you, Worcester. So there's more. Th so, so there's new directions coming out of this. Absolutely. Because this is the question. This is the question that a lot of people who are sympathetic to Occupy Worcester yes. asked me: Is what are the, what are the people trying to accomplish by having this camp okay. there? Well, right now we're trying to build community and solidarity within the Worcester community, mm -hmm. uh, and that's my opinion. Uh, okay. Of course, not the Occupy right. Worcester's official opinion, but. Right. Um, we're also uh, trying to get into some community projects. Um, that's been a big part of ours. Like uh, we're doing clean up Main Street. Yeah, this initiative this Saturday. Uh, this Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, anyone's welcome to come on down. Okay. Um, that, that's going to be really good. So that's one of our community initiatives. On a kind of larger scale, I mean, the reason I'm here yeah. is to fight corporate greed right. and uh, gain more representation for the working class within our own government. So I guess that's the question: is is about having the camp. You know, in that place is how is that connected to fighting corporate greed? It sounds like the answer is it's building well from people there together. It's a home base. All right. Uh, we have our action on November fifth. Okay. We're going to be protesting outside Bank of America. Okay. And we wouldn't have been able to organize that so quickly if it wasn't for having a home base at Lake Park. Right. So. And you guys said there was a general assembly tonight at the park, right? Yes, there was. So this is this going to be more of that kind of thing? Yep. Uh, our general assemblies are. Uh, regularly scheduled at the park as well at the commons now. Right. You can find that out on our website. All right. I got to ask you this question. Okay. I hear a lot of stories of people going down there and being like, when I was there, there was like a lot of like drinking or whatever. Okay. There was like a lot of rowdiness. Sure. Has this been your experience? Uh, not. I can't say that that is my whole experience. Okay. I can say that that okay. has happened. We have it under control. It's taken care of. Yep. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. No, we uh, we talked about it a lot at GA today. Yeah. That kind of behavior is not acceptable on camp. And okay. uh, we will be 
acting on that. All right, I'm glad to hear that. Well, there's always problems to overcome in groups. Right, and we're uh, in full communication with the environmental people as well as the police. You know, right. Uh, right now, we're not against them. Right. It, that's my opinion, of course, not the occupant. Sure, you're yeah, right. You were speaking, this man is speaking for himself. Yeah. This man, whoever he may be, is yeah. speaking for himself only. <laughs> I'll just give you a hard time. Um, great. Well, uh, is there, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on and representing. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Brandon, do you have any questions? You don't have any questions, do you? I kind of did, actually. Oh, gonna, gonna, throw, can Brandon ask you time? We can do questions. What um, general, general information for um, viewers on November 5th, what is the time frame that you folks are going to be at Bank of America? Because I actually happen to be a Bank of America customer who's looking to close their account that day, yes. and I would like to be doing it while there is something going on there. I Whether it be 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Because right. they are not open all day on the Yeah, short hours Saturday, on Saturdays. Yeah. Which Bank of America? Uh, Park Ave. The Park Avenue. Park Ave. I, think, I believe the address is 250 or 266 Around Park there. Ave. Okay. Um, we're going to be the there. That yes. Okay. We're going to be there 10 o'clock or so. Uh, you can look that up on our website also. Right. Um, yeah, so it's big bang pullout day. And this is, so this is, remember, remember the 5th of November, people who are, in, who are behind this whole Occupy Wall Street yes. movement are closing their accounts at big banks, these banks that get the, the bailouts, these banks that are all based on corporate welfare and socializing risk. They're putting their money in credit unions or local banks or wherever. And this is a international action. Yeah. So for people who say we're not united as a movement, this is a united action that the Occupy movement is taking. This is pretty cool. This Last is pretty question. cool. question. Um, so we were down at the camp at the lake tonight. Uh, there yep. was actually more tents than I thought were down there. Like, yes. how, how many people are, uh, roughly speaking? Uh, people? People and tents. I mean, uh, uh, Roughly, tw there is about 25 to 27 tents. Okay. Oh, so it's grown uh, over the past week. Yes, we grow every day. Okay. Um, we have a rotating crew of some days it can be you know, only 15, some day it can be 50. Yeah. So there's a rotating crew of people who are staying at the camp as well as just showing up generally to support the camp. Uh -huh. We've had a lot of support from the community, dropping by donations. Nice. So it's been really good in that way. And some people from the commu community coming down and stealing signs, I hear. Well, uh, <laughs> there's been one member of the community uh, doing such actions. You should send him some free signs because you have a lot of them. Yeah, if we, he needs we're one. actually thinking of perhaps asking for the sign back to donate to the Historical Society because our movement will be history. <laughs> Oh, you mean history like it will be over, or history like it no, will be historic? No, it will be in the books. <laughs> All right, good deal, good deal. Any other questions? Uh, just to follow up from the tents, how many do you think are down here at Clark now? Or Clark is about four or five, but there's planning on being about 15 people staying here, maximum. Excellent. Maybe around 10, 15. And they t expressed to me tonight, one member expressed to me tonight that they're part of Occupy Worcester. This isn't just about college kids, this is about all of us. So this is about multiple locations for Occupy Worcester? Yes. So Her, that's what in my understanding is. So from the banks of Lake, from the banks of Cook's Pond three and a half weeks ago, to, to the, the banks of Lake Quinsigamon a week and a half ago, and now also in Clark, you're going, you're going citywide. We're taking over. That's awesome. Cook, thanks for talking to us. All right. Bon appetit. And now we're back outside doing our experiment with low lighting video with Matthew Laverne, sometime of Occupy Boston, sometime of Occupy Worcester, now down here at the Clark Encampment. Matthew, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good. What's your, uh, what, what's, what's going on these days? It sounds like, uh, I mean, we can have late breaking news that people are trying to try to figure out how to hash out how to define Occupy Clark and Occupy Worcester in terms of each other or whatever, but that's not such a big deal. Um, no, I think, uh, it's more of a symbiotic relationship. They both work in benefit of each other. So Good deal. I think uh, any talk about separating the two is just negative and unnecessary, personally. Yeah, there so. you go. There you go. And, what, what's, and what's been your experience of the Occupy movement in Worcester this last week? What, what, where are things heading right now? Um, it's, it's hard to say. Um, there are a lot of very high-spirited individuals who... Um, they're, ah. they're sleeping in a park in the snow, which snow in October is a little bizarre to me, but, you know, we live in New England, what can you sure. expect? Um, I, there's... You gotta be pretty hard, you gotta, you gotta be pretty, you gotta be a certain kind of person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I think, I think there is enough spirit to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I think, um, the support is coming out. I've, I've seen the support coming out. Um, I think it's a matter of taking more action and making ourselves known. Um, people are being distracted by municipal laws. People are being distracted by, you know, 
for example, what we were just talking about, whether it's Clark or whether it's Worcester or uh, the differences in between that. Right. And it, it really just gets in the way of moving forward in a positive direction. Um, it, it, rather than just act, people get hung up on things, which has been the issue for however long it's been going on. And that's talking on a national level with people in general. That's why we are where we're at. People yeah. are distracted by things that they don't need to be distracted by. That's how I feel, at least. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to say, the, the economy is bad enough and the political situation is bad enough that that, that draws your attention back to it. <laughs> to, to what you're supposed to be focused on, whether you want to or not. Yeah, you can only yeah. get involved in these little administrative things so long before you realize, like, wow. Yeah. Foreclosures, no yeah. jobs. Yeah. We're supposed yeah. to be fighting bureaucracy, not creating more. Yup. Brenda, do you have any? Do you have a? Do you have a question? I don't have a question. I th- would just like to point out that that sign seems incredibly appropriate now. I just noticed yep. it a second ago. But. It says "Welcome." People can't read it. It says "Welcome to Clark, challenging convention, changing our world." There or challenging. There's no more. There's you know. There's no more phrase that Clark students of my acquaintance that speak with more bitterness <laughs> than "challenging convention, changing our world." Um, anyways, but yeah, hey, there you go. Yeah, they're I, they're behind you. That's um. Right? It's, they have uh, a sign. We, it, people don't realize they have the ability to do these things. Um, yeah. And, and it's, for example, the Bank of America pullout that has, has been organized uh, around all of America. I was talking to a man in the park the other day, and he's been screwed over by Bank of America multiple times, and he was saying to me, I don't know what I have the ability to do myself to change this. And mm-hmm. I said, well, we're presenting you with the option right here. Stop using Bank of America. It's as simple as that. Uh, And the idea is if you get enough people to stop using them, um, they won't exist anymore. They won't be able to do the things that they do. And, you know, uh, there was a news story, I think it was a couple weeks back, maybe a month back, a little bit longer, where Bank of America illegally foreclosed on someone's home, so they got a lawyer behind them, and they went into Bank of America and foreclosed on them, yeah. and just took all of their stuff. It's things like that that just needs to get done. It's it's. But it's, it's going to be a team effort, right? I mean, it's like it can't just be, and it doesn't necessarily have to be. You don't have to sign up for Occupy Worcester to go yeah. close your Bank of America account. Yeah. But like, I, I am closing my Bank of America account on that day. Yeah. And for me, it just makes sense to do it while people are actually protesting the bank, so yeah. that the bank. Even though I'm doing that for some reasons that would be, I'd be doing it even if Occupy Worcester wasn't taking place, right? I mean, yeah. the, the, the hike in fees, yeah. uh, sixteen and a half thousand dollar an hour salaries for CEOs, right? I mean, the stuff is just not cool. But that said, it seems to be a bit more powerful statement for me, just a regular guy, to walk in in a shirt and tie and close my bank account while there are people holding signs outside on a exactly. Saturday morning than doing exactly. it just because. And I hope that's what people realize about uh, this: that when you, the power in numbers, even if we don't all agree and we can't figure out what we're supposed to be naming a group of tents like there's still a lot that can be done when everyone's working together exactly that's what makes this exactly incredible. that's what i've i've been trying to push upon people is um regardless of where you stand politically uh regardless of where you stand anywhere how you identify yourself um the color of your skin the religion you study or you practice any of those things that we have spent years and years dividing ourselves between it doesn't matter. We're all people, and we're all in the same boat. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing people be afraid of other people. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I've been here. Matthew, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. We'll let you get back to that GA. Thank you, man. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. We're, now, Brendan, we're here to talk about other important matters, such as probably minor city politics. <laughs> I don't know. Get Come back on. Into the bureaucracy. Yeah. Brendan, by the way, is standing in the snow, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm, keep it real. I'm I mean, trying to stay out of the snow because I don't want to get the camera damaged. <laughs> my ring. That's, that's fair. Fair. Um, fair choice. All right. So. What do we have this week? What do we have this week? We have. You know, I just found out, Mike. What? There's like an election in like a week and a half. There's like an election like in a week and a half. I would <laughs> just like to point out before you move on to actually <sighs> Paul, Paul, city business that the reason that we have to point that out is because the candidates that are running for local office this year have been so abysmally, absurdly boring that. Like, they people haven't done good outreach. They haven't not good, done good outreach and good marketing. People don't even know that there's an election. Like I, I consider myself to be a pretty well engaged member of the electorate. It was an email that I got from uh, <clears throat> current mayor uh, Joe O'Brien. Yes. Reminding me that the election was in two weeks. I thought we were about a month off. It was. What are you What are you going to do? Well, here. So here's the thing. So next week on this show, mm-hmm. we're going to tell people. We're going to We're going to tell you how to vote. Okay. The Worcester Magazine has this thing out, and it's like has all these details about candidates and opinions, and it's kind of funny. 
But, but whatever. But you don't need that. You need to watch us tell you how to vote. It's we're gonna do it on next week's show. Today we're only gonna talk about one we're only gonna talk about the school committee actually very briefly today. But let me talk about a couple things that are coming up. Alright, so we got Occupy Western Occupy Clark, day eleven of Occupy Worcester in general. We got a hey, we got a, we got a, a Stone Soup Work Day on uh, October the thirtieth, Sunday, from nine a.m. to three p.m. Uh, former five hundred eight guest Sarah Acefo walking in the background. There, this, we've had Stone Soup on for years now, talking about rebuilding Stone Soup. They're actually doing it. People are going down. They're cleaning up. They're preparing for the it's work crews to come here. in. That Sunday, five King Street, nine a.m. You should do it. Occupy Worcester has a general assembly 1 p.m. on the common on Sunday. The Occupy Worcester Main South cleanup. They're meeting at Clark Saturday at 10 a.m. If you want to be part of something which doesn't involve protesting and just involves sort of building community and giving back, look, that could be a thing you could be involved with. Just look for the REI showroom floor, and you'll know. You're this is a nice. Floor. These are some nice tents. These tents have not been through 11 days of state park hell. Like they're still nice and bright. They're still nice and bright. This one's white. This one's awesome. Warning: keep heat sources away. Marty Lamb hasn't gotten back to us. Marty Lamb. Um, Marty Lamb uh, just got cut out of redistricting. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, oh, because his whole, what do you mean, got, got cut out? Well, he, Marty Lamb isn't from uh, Western Mass. So if the redistricting falls the way folks are talking now, we, yeah. you know, between... Uh, you know. This is the, this is the, Mar Marty Lamb was the Republican candidate in the last congressional election who lost to Jim McGovern. Call, and who said he was going to be on our show and hasn't returned my most recent call saying he's to be on the show. I'm sure he'll be on the show. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, well, I'm just saying, the, the <coughs> congressional districts have changed, so we won't see him again in the context of running for the Fighting Third Massachusetts congressional district. He doesn't live in our, he won't, he won't be living in our, where he we are. Not. Well, that's it. The barfer may never be on 508. You're off the hook. This is what you're telling me. You're All off right, the hook. fine. Marty Lamb retired. We're gonna we're gonna put a check mark next to that one. This university, Clark University, it this was just recently named the 28th the best value in private colleges by uh, Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine. Good job, Clark. My uh, challenging convention. There you go. What uh? My 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 alma mater, Caltech, actually was number three. Right after uh, Princeton and Yale, which is kind of awesome because I never realized I was work that I was never realized that Wait, amongst other things values? I was getting a bargain. Yeah, I never realized Princeton I was getting and a Yale? Were, were Princeton bargains? and Yale, Princeton, Yale, and Caltech, more bargains than Clark. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe because Harvard is too expensive for what you get. They throw off the curve. I don't know. There you go. And Clark, apparently, you know, I want to say actually, we never talk. We talk about the higher education bubble on this show. Mm -hmm. We have. have uh, I think. We, I just I'm think about. I feel like there's a lot of Occupy talk around student loans and the fact yeah. that, like, at this point, student loans I think are actually one of the more expensive interest loans that you can get in this right. country, um, considering interest rates are essentially zero right now. Right. Um, and students pay whatever five well, seven percent. Great about the whole thing if you're focused on a bubble. I mean, what the Hold president on, we got just water on the lens. What the president just. I thought that was on my face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what the president just came out with two days ago, or if you're watching the show probably last week, uh, in regards to making it easier for students to access loans, seems to be missing the point entirely. It's like we're going to give you more loans. We're not going to address the fact that <coughs> folks can't handle the debt that they're saddled with now by virtue of wanting to go to school. There's some great numbers out there if anyone's actually interested in looking back. If you were going to school in the 60s, it was like you could work eight hours a week for you know make roughly six bucks an hour, and you'd be able to afford to pay for school. And now it's just, oh, this is what they call a bubble. That the, cost, that the cost has gone up super super fast and we still haven't seen it and that it's that's the argument is that eventually you're going to see this collapse when people say like it's not worth it from any point of view or it's, it's not worth it from most points of view to get a bachelor's degree in this country financially at some point the, the argument is that at some point people will say this and then suddenly and be, boom and tuition and just collapsed with that kind of debt at, at loan shark interest rates yeah anyways yeah exactly that you have to you have to borrow to do it and you have to borrow and it's expensive anyway i just bring this up because i feel like i know i don't hear too many occupied people talk about you know, whatever. Turn this on, tune in, drop out. But don't don't get involved that, with college though, in the I first think this place. Is some, I think if we were in another part of the country, we might hear more of that. Where Massachusetts, Worcester and Boston in particular, but Massachusetts in general, we still have relatively healthy work environments. So it, you can come out of a college, you know, in, in an area like Boston or Worcester, and essentially find a job. It might not be your, your dream job, but there are more jobs out here for people coming out of college than there are in other you areas of the country. Come over this way because nobody can see you. They don't there's, want there's to. no light. Okay. I, I look, it's been a All long right. day, Mike. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, our, our just our general work environment, our general uh, employment levels are slightly healthier than they are in the rest of the country. So you might not, we might not have hit that sort of point where college students are throwing their hands in the air, saying, "You know, I just walk away with twenty-five thousand dollars of debt and I can't get a job to pay it off." Um, I don't think that's as much of a problem. It's still a problem here as it is in other parts of the country. 
All right. Um, I wanted to talk about the the school committee thing. Actually, I was going to talk about this thing with this with this guy who was shot by the police after driving his car around like a madman. <clears throat> but I don't know if we're going to have time. Sorry. Um, I want to talk about the school committee thing just because this is interesting. We've really not talked about the school committee except to talk about you know how longtime 508 panelist Tracy Novick should be reelected. We haven't really talked about it. There's an amazing an amazing little note in the Telegram today. It was talking about who the school committee's union. Who the, sorry, not school committee union. Who the school employees union in Worcester was endorsing for election to the school committee? The teachers union. Yes. The teachers union. Who they were electing for to be on the school committee? And the unions are very powerful in these elections. Am I right to say this? Well, they may be the only people You're who actually show up to vote. There was ten people yes. vote in the, the primary, so yeah. We I should point out that in fact, yes, members. the people who are standing out on this rainy night at Clark tonight, if they all voted, could control the fate <laughs> of the city of Worcester. That one guy. <laughs> If that, ma- if that metal man over there could vote, he might be the deciding vote. There's so few people who vote. Anyway, so the school, so the, so this is a union that has like thousands of people in it or something, though, right? I bet Giorgio could figure out a way to Paul Giorgio could figure <laughs> out a way to get Freud re- registered to vote in this district. There you go. There you go. Um, Are we gonna get sued for that? Sorry, Paul. <laughs> what? I think we'll be fine. Um, he's resourceful. That's all you're saying. That's all I'm <laughs> he's saying. resourceful. Um, Yes, so, so, so the controversy, the amazing thing is, this is just a note, a note in here. So the controversy is whatever you want it to be around this. The amazing note is that John Monfredo, who's a member of the Massachusetts Teachers Association, and who's an incumbent, did not get the endorsement. And apparently they told him some reason over the phone or when they talked to him about this. Mm-hmm. But then they still told another reason to the press, and then they were like, well, this is actually the real reason. Apparently the reason is because of his, his in-city time column, in-city right. times column. And not because his in-city times column is kind of a bad column. Or that it's aiding and abetting a crazy person. Or, or anything like that. It's because the in-city times has profanity. And I feel like, you know, I don't know, this is sort of like the most recent like in-city times mainstream. I'm trying to think the last two times the in-city times has sort of made it into the mainstream news. One was whenever they were sl- inadvertently slandering the fire chief. Right. And before then was whenever they were got a, a nasty letter from the city's human rights commission mm-hmm. uh, for being mean. But it just seems just, it seems intellectually dishonest, right? I mean, because they they're, they swear. I mean, they use naughty language. I mean, is that that's that seems like you're kind of missing the point entirely, especially as educators who should probably be a little bit more tolerant <laughs> of language as like a component of free speech and what have you. Uh, you know, it, it seems to miss the point entirely that the newspaper. Uh, is just an, an awful uh, entity that just seems to do have no, serve no purpose other than to attack folks and just be well, generally mean spirited. I would say there's a it's a mixed bag. It's a really mixed bag because there's people for the NCT Times who know what they're talking about and are awesome, and there's people for the NCT Times, you know who we mean, who don't do who don't do research, who are completely factually inaccurate, who are just mean spirited and angry. And pro- I guess use profanity. I don't know. It's anyway. It's weird that there's the. I mean, it's literally guilt by association. It's literally you write for a newspaper that also has swears in it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, there's therefore a lot we're of not going to endorse myself you? included who've been trying to get people to, to, to disassociate themselves with uh, you know in city times for quite some time and say that is a reason not to support somebody's candidacy is because they're involved with that that publication because because of, of all but the trouble with the language. I well, mean, anyway. I'm, I'm the only reason you have to use the dumb button on this show. That's, I wouldn't. Anyways, it, well, there you go. Anyways, I just think that that's. I just think that that's sort of remarkable and perhaps worth perhaps worth noting. I think we said we weren't we going to get into the, the we, well we we said we weren't going to get into the horse race aspects of the city council and we haven't we've gotten here's a horse race aspect of the uh, school committee so whatever too bad for us. Um, I want to actually talk about this. Um, I want to talk about this guy who was shot by the police. It just snowed down my neck. Can I come in here? Yeah, with you, you can come in here for a second. Let me see if I can bring this up on my phone. I'm going to start. Can, can I be seen on the camera from there? Oh, well, it's kind of creepy, but yeah. I guess can you so. kind of can you kind of see me? Well, yeah. you can hold I'll the hold camera, it. and I can do the I can read this article here. Um, hi, hi, everyone. You know, I shaved off my beard, and nobody recognizes me. Like we went into the Occupy Worcester thing, and people were just like, "Who is that man? Who is that man from the from the whatever?" Um, so you got to read if you care about crime in the city, you got to read these police press releases because sure they're like you know just. There's more perspectives than the police perspective to a lot of these stories, and there's more perspectives that develop over time. But man, they're some of the best written, action-packed things. Let me know when we were like at 19 minutes on there. Um, this is this thing from uh, from a month ago, Friday, Friday, September 23rd at approximately 6:23 p.m. Officers in a, on patrol observed a green vehicle strike a crosswalk signal pole located at Main and Myrtle Streets and continue to drive off. The officer was in the opposite direction of travel. When he conducted a U-turn, the suspect fled the area. The officer, officer lost sight of the vehicle. 7.17 p.m., this is 45 minutes later, 
Worcester police respond to a hit and run accident call at 121 Highland Street. They received information that a green car is traveling east on Highland and veered off and struck a parked vehicle. At the time of impact, the couple was about to enter the car. The driver was in front of the parked car was in front of the car with another parked car in front of him. The passenger of the parked vehicle was about to enter the passenger door. When the green car struck the parked car, the force of the impact sent the parked car into the operator standing in front of the car, sending him up and onto the hood. The parked car then smashed into the car in front of him. The parked car also struck the foot of the passenger, but they, did, they refused medical attention. Um, the t people said the male driver, the driver never exited his vehicle. He placed the car in reverse, backed up, tearing off his front bumper. Then he drove off heading east on Highland Street. 7.36 p.m., 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, police received a call for a possible robbery at People's United Bank at 967 Grafton Street. The call came in to dispatch that the car had driven completely inside the bank. This is actually, there's details different than this in the TNG article. Arriving officers observed the bank to have extensive damage to the front building. Police spoke with a witness who stated he was in the shopping shop parking lot retrieving shopping carriages. The green car drove into the lot at high rate of speed, nearly striking him, then drove directly into the front of the bank. The witnesses stated he ran inside the bank to help the driver, but the driver was already out of the car and over the bank counter looking for cash. The change article today said that he was just in the teller line yelling about where's the money. <laughs> Suspect jumped back over. That is a significant over. difference. I don't know. Well, we'll see. The, the people respond differently to these things. The suspect jumped back over to the counter and drove the car out of the bank, nearly hitting the same man again as he sped off, heading back into the city. But finally, the drivers find this guy. Um, he had driven up and onto the city sidewalks to evade capture. He was eventually cornered in an alleyway off Tainer Street. Officers had blocked him in. He turned off the car and was threatening the officer who now exited the cruiser. The officer fired at the suspect and struck him in the abdomen. The, also in the TNG article today, I... If I'm remembering correctly, basically what it says is going on here is that um, actually there were like two officers in front of the guy. Um, this guy is Isaac Changa, whose last known address was listed at 71 Main Street, the former People in Peril shelter. I should point this out. Um, so he, he hasn't had a known address in over a year. Okay, so here's what happened. Apparently, the officers caught up to him. Shoot me, he allegedly said to police officer Elias Baez when the officer told him to shut off the car. I'm going to kill you then, he said. Three officers involved in the scene told investigators they reported to the scene. Two scrambled out of the way. The third thought that they had been struck by his car, demanded him to stop, and then the officer said to shoot him. The officers started to move back and feared he was going to be hit by the car, so then he fired the gun into the vehicle, striking the guy, Mr. Chunga, twice. Interesting to me that uh, not only is this an incredible thing and really sad because the guy is obviously mentally ill doing all this stuff and it's sad that all this chaos comes out of that. Also kind of interesting that he lists his address as being at the PIP which has been closed for a year because when the PIP was open there were constantly people saying all these criminals were staying at the PIP and other people were saying no 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 they just say they're staying at the PIP because they were staying there at one point and they're not there staying there anymore. This is a perfect example of this a year after the fact people still listing 701. If you get arrested in the city of Worcester maybe as a sign of solidarity with or it's just a sign of just a sign of nostalgia. You should list your address as being 701 Main. How all much the, time all do the cool criminals are doing it. We're down to 20 seconds. We're down to 20 seconds. All right, Brendan Mellican, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Mike check. Mike check. This has been 508. This has been 508. We'll talk to you all next week. We'll talk to you all next week. Bye bye.